Hello, how's it going? I feel like I'm missing something. <laughs> How are you guys? Um, what are you guys working on? So I'm Sarami and this is So So Live and mainly I live stream sewing garments together. If you are watching this and it's not live, um, please feel free to skip ahead and rewind and you can find the spots that you want. Hopefully there's some timestamps in the description. If you tap the title of the video, it should be listed in the description. They may not be there yet. Um, you can, If you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and it'll be chunked up usually and then you can see, hover over it and see which chunk you're looking for because they're titled. And um, let's see what else. Um, I do this mostly for free. This is, you know, I do not make money doing this. If you want to support me, that'd be great. I have Patreon and Streamlabs donations if you want to do like one-time donations and a link on my website. And I also sell some patterns and things like that. And I'm a trained pattern drafter, worked in the garment industry for a really long time. What else can I tell you? If you're watching this live, there is a little um, little like drop down menu at the very top of the chat window that says top chat and live chat and I recommend you toggle it to say live chat because for some reason it will edit out certain chats for no reason at all and you might miss, I do, I miss like what we're talking about sometimes because I'm like what are you talking about? So that's a good thing. Please like the video if you can, that really helps. Um, uh, viewership, likes, and comments on the video once it's uploaded are really helpful for the YouTube algorithm. So, all right, well, welcome. We are sewing the Kelly Anorak part five today. And it's been a process, like a really great process. We had a couple of pattern streams, um, then I cut it out. And then I've took the sewing pretty much in manageable chunks. So if you want to keep up, it makes it a lot of streams. But I also feel like not having these like four hour long uploaded streams is better. You know, it seems a little more manageable. This has been a really fun project for me and I'm waterproofing it. So a few of the things I'm doing differently. Hey, Walter, a few of the things I'm doing differently are, um, I modified the sleeve fit a little bit for me, which doesn't change the sewing for you. I did eliminate the shoulder seam of the yoke and the back pleat. Um, and I, the biggest modification I made was the pocket since I'm waterproofing it. And I'm not a big fan of the way the pocket patch pockets looked, especially since those flaps were our fake pockets at which I'm not a big fan of. I like things really functional. So I kept the flaps and I made welt pockets. And if you're a Patreon patron that the pattern pieces I use, I just kind of traced them off. I'm going to share those in a document soon. So you can add them if you like to any project and then you can also sew it just the way I did. So, all right. So I'm also waterproofing this with otter wax, which I've never done before. It's a bar of wax and you rub it on. There's two methods. There's a, um, heated method where you melt a pot of wax that you buy from them and then you brush it on or a bar. And I really struggled with deciding which method to do, but something in it, their site is beautiful, but it's a little limited on information as far as like why you select what you select. They have that, but it's kind of hard to find. And I have to click a lot of things to find what I'm trying to base my reasoning off of. The tutorials are also very uh, brand specific. So they're like how to wax a such and such jacket, a Carhartt jacket, it'll be very specific. So it's not like your own personal project, but I think that's fine. And they have boots and hats and all kinds of things like that on there. So I opted for the bar wax because it sounded like that was actually the better option. The, the one that you melt and brush on was more appealing mentally because it seemed like I could penetrate the fabric better with the wax and it would go a little faster because the bar seems like it'll take a while. You're not going to see me do the whole thing today. But they also say if you don't want the wax to touch your skin, you know, the bar wax is a better choice. I lined this jacket and I have to admit like that is one of the reasons why I lined it because I didn't want the wax to be against my skin just because I feel like it'll be uncomfortable, you know. Hey, Melin, how's it going? So, um, but now, you know, of course, I was looking at my tutorials again. I was like, okay, I'm going to look up their site and see like, is this really what I want to do? And I did have a little bit of like, oh, maybe I should have done the melted one. But um, then I kind of finally found the FAQ that kind of led me to getting the bar. 
So I'm gonna go for it. It does make your fabric look, look almost like a leather because um, it gives it kind of a waxy, shiny quality. And it dark, it actually didn't darken mine. It says it'll darken it, and you can see pictures on their Instagram as well, which they don't even hashtag things on their Instagram. So it's pretty hard to find real information. You know, you have to kind of find other people doing it. Um, mine, it makes lighter in color and shiny, really, really shiny. So, and then you let it cure, and then it should be pretty, it'll be a lot less tacky to the touch, and it'll be waterproof. Fingers crossed. So I actually worked in the outerwear industry in um, doing waterproof, breathable fabrics. So this is really new to me and that's kind of why I selected it. I was really gonna go for that whole techie route. And then I was like, you know, why would I do that when I don't have the proper machinery to do seam sealing and things like that? Um, so why not do this? This is more accessible, so. Okay. Um, so far, you know, I've liked this pattern. There's been a few things that are kind of you know, been a little bit, uh, I would do differently, you know, and mainly the, the instructions are a little bit cut and dried, you know, they're not wrong, but they're very simple. I didn't really like the way that the front, center front zipper pieces were named and how they explained to put it together. It was actually extremely simple. So if this is your first stream of this jacket, don't be intimidated by sewing that part. That's actually one of the easiest parts. It's just a bunch of straight seams, that's all. And once you know which piece is going where, it's actually not bad. So, um, you know, that's my assessment on that. And there's probably been other things I've mentioned, but today we're gonna be sewing on the waist casing that has the draw cord. And if I had my dream jacket, sorry, it's really bright because my fabric's really dark. I'll turn it down a little bit. But um, if I had my druthers, this waist casing would be on the inside and you wouldn't see it at all, except for maybe two stitch lines. That is technically possible, but I would have had to drastically alter the sewing steps. And I didn't really want this to get away from um, sewing the sewing steps too far, because I know I already do quite a few mods that probably make people feel like I'm not sticking to the instructions when mostly I am. Um, those little mods are usually really minor things. They do not interrupt the way you sew it together. So I stuck with the way they did it. And it's kind of interesting. You you attach the casing to the center front seam when you're doing your zippers and flaps. And then you leave it unattached until the very end once your lining is all in there so that you can top stitch through all layers. Because you want to catch all layers for the draw cord to work properly. Otherwise you'd have this really loose lining inside when the outer jacket was cinched, which would be kind of weird. So one of the things, um, so uh, I feel like, like it look, it'll look nice, right? I'm just not a fan of the draw cord hanging out this hole on the front, you know? Um, I don't know why, I'm just really into like really simple things the way they look on the outside. Um, so one thing that I find interesting is like when you top stitch through this, you are gonna be stitching through like part of this facing right here. And no one's gonna see the inside, you know, I know that, but it is kind of an odd thing. And I think on this side, it's even more so. Yeah, so you're actually gonna stitch through this facing all the way up to here. So you're gonna be seeing that stitch lines. But here's the other really th weird thing that I just realized. There's a really big pleat at the center back here, and you need that pleat for kind of movement and um, mobility with your lining. See, it's right here at the top, comes down from this back facing. So that pleat, that's, that's gonna get, like I'm trying to kind of like disperse the fullness of the pleat along this, but you're gonna get tucks. I don't really think you can avoid that. Um, and I don't think that that's ideal. It's gonna be fine because it's, it's, it's gonna be fine. It's just not um, an elegant way to do it. So I, there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> I just wanted to warn you about that. I think if I thought about that and realized that early on, I would have skipped the whole draw cord thing. It looks really cute, uncinched, but I do like that that gives me a little shape and it feels a little bit more streamlined. Hey Derek, <laughs> freezing cold Scotland. Oh my goodness. It's uh, beautiful and sunny here, but I'm hoping for rain soon, obviously. So I don't know if we're gonna get any. It's so beautiful outside. So, um, that's something, you know, I didn't think about ahead, the pleat. So, um, 
One other thing that I didn't think about, which is on me, is that, okay, so I sewed this welt pocket. I hand sewed my little welt right here, right after the stream, the day we did this, just so I had one finished, you know? I didn't do the other one and I thought I had, and so I can't wax this side today because it's still loose. I mean, I could wax it, but then I'd have to rewax it after I hand sew it. I don't really want to hand sew waxed fabric. That would be weird. So the other thing I didn't think about was that I haven't, so two things. Um, I didn't sew the hems to the underarm seams just because I didn't want the stream to kind of like get bogged down with doing little hand sewing details that I know you know you can do, um, but you do tether these, un these underarm seams to the seam allowances when you're in this process. Could I wear, yeah. Yeah, right, Beverly? But the thing is, it's already in my center front seams. Like, I, this would be way too far back to go to remove it. But I think people should consider not doing it. If you're doing the lined version, if you're not doing the lined version, you can put this waist casing on the inside of your garment, and um, all you'd see was the two-stitch lines. And you could do a raincoat like that. It doesn't have to be lined, you know? So, hi, Sydney. <clears throat> yeah, so... I think I'm just, I just have to do it now, Beverly, you know, it'll be fine, <laughs> right? It'll be fine. <laughs> so I didn't do these little hand sewing things and I'm realizing, oh shoot, I have a package. Sorry guys, a second. Hey. How are you? Good, how are you? Thank you. Good. You have a good day? Yeah, you too. I keep getting packages. <laughs> it does look fine as a design feature. I totally agree. Yeah. I mean, it definitely gives your jacket this like, wow, you made that kind of look and feature, which is kind of cool, you know? So um, I'm all for it. And I think I'm gonna like having the draw cord because like I said, I like things kind of close so that I don't catch my clothing on things because I am, I don't say this in kind of a jokey attention seeking way, I'm really klutzy. And so catching my sleeves on things is kind of something I just try to prevent um, because it just happens a lot for me. So, and I think like cinching your jacket and keeping it close, it also keeps you a little warmer, you know? So, so anyway. So I haven't hand stitched those. And so one thing that I actually been thinking about a lot for the last like day and a half was this hem. So they don't ever mention a thing. Again, once you've sewn this hem, you can see I have this little pleat here, which you're supposed to have. And it started kind of keeping me up at night because I was like, well, what I don't like is that this could soften out, right? Like this, like there's no structure to hold this in place. I think in the most part, you would actually stitch this hem down and let the, the lining bag over it, you know, like it's supposed to, you're supposed to have that movement, <clears throat> but you don't, there's no instruction to do that. And so that's something I'm going to do is I'm not gonna top stitch it because I can't because now I've already sewn this down here with the pleat. But I would, um, I'm going to tether it at the side seams like you're supposed to do on the sleeves. Yeah, exactly, Michelle. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hey, Terry, nice to see you. Yeah, exactly, Michelle. That is, yeah. there. And it's funny because um, in our house that you know we're living in now that we bought this summer, it has these gigantic, handles on the drawers these I know you guys have seen these things they were all the rage whenever they remodeled this kitchen there's it's like we're stuck with it too because it's like these really long handles like this that are like the polished silver and um they have a little arm that sticks out you know and then posts about right here and my uh, I'm the right height where every one of my pockets catches on those and it's so annoying you know and I open the drawer, so I don't, like, when I pull away, it feels like I'm gonna get unstuck, but no, I open the drawer, and then me and the drawer are going, you know? And then I'm kind of, you know, doing that whole thing. This reminds me of actually a funny story. I know you're wanting, like, please get to the sewing, but I'm gonna tell a funny story, because this is one that has haunted me my whole life. <laughs> so, when I was a kid, do you guys remember, anyone my age, those pants when painter's loops became really popular on the side? You know, that big loop, carpenter loop. You were supposed to put a hammer in it. 
like they're like carpenter pants and it's like this big loop and there'd be like this low pocket I had two pairs I had a white pair and a blue pair <laughs> and I loved those pants so me and my friend one time were at her this little the school near her house we were, it was like on the weekend and we were just hanging out and we decided to cut over the fence and um, walk home instead of going around to the entrance of the school so this was Orangewood Avenue in Anaheim California and um, which is like a block from Disneyland really busy street and we were she lived on Orangewood and so we were we hopped the fence and as I went over the chain link fence that painters loop got caught on the top of the chain link and I literally stuck you know I was a kid so I was pretty light I got stuck there it looked like I was standing and on that loop because of the weird angle and then my pants just went I went slowly down it was like a movie moment a terrible movie moment and my pants ripped in half from waistband to waistband the only thing <laughs> right the only thing holding my pants together was the waistband at the top and the zipper fly and that is it my pants were fully fl like split down the middle because of that stupid painter's loop and that is a perfect example of me catching on things. And um, my friend practically wet her pants laughing so hard. And I had to walk home like that holding my pants together. So <laughs> thanks, Ray. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's one of my embarrassing moments. You know, when I was like middle school age. Wait, middle school. I was a little younger than middle school, you know. So yeah, I wasn't in middle school. I was in grade school. Yeah, so one of those things I remember like the brand was something to do with a berry jam berry or jam berry something like that anyway it was pretty funny <laughs> good version made you laugh I can't see all the chat here let me move my monitor a little to the right I have the camera set up on the pattern table today since we'll be waxing and doing the snaps and um because of that so I don't have to do a bunch of, of changing of the cameras especially the face cam I did the ironing before the stream. So, so the thing I did off camera today was I sewed my back waist casing at the side seams here and I top stitched it. And then I, I turned under this edge, ironed it. And I, I kind of measured up from the bottom hem. So what I learned was measuring up from the bottom of this to the hem and trying to maintain that distance around the bottom kind of made it droop in the back. So the back has a little bit of a scoop. So what I would do is just layer your jacket out flat and just find, I, what I did is I made it the same to the side seam at the front here. And then I just kind of laid the jacket out flat and then pinned it straight across the back. So, hey Adina, how's it going? So, um, that was how I did that and it was not, I am making it sound like it was really easy. This is a little bit tricky because the other thing I did was I hung my jacket up and made sure that all of the lining was smooth to the jacket going down as far as I could. You know, like it's not gonna be the same because there's this little pleat at the bottom here, which is great. You just don't want the lining to be like this above the stitching we're gonna put through, right? So you gotta try and get this as smooth as possible. Um, I didn't put that little stitch of chain stitches um, on the underarm of the sleeve. So if you've done that, that'll help. But I can feel my seams are right on top of each other, which is great. So take it, you know, off and on, hanging up and laying it down, hanging up, laying down to kind of double check it. And then make sure like, once you have this pinned, Hang it up and look at it. Make sure there's nothing bubbling or doing any blousing on the inside or the out. Because it might really bug you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's right, Derek. Yeah, no. No, my underwear were a part of that story for sure. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> the, and I, oh, oh, this is the other funny thing. At the time... Also, one of the trends, and my mom and I were kind of into these underwear. They were just like white cotton printed underwear that had cute little designs on, like little ladybugs, little hippopotamuses, little tiny um, little motifs. We had never in our lives seen fun printed underwear. Like this was like a big deal, you know, it's like the 80s, like early 80s. And so we each had a bunch of them. It was kind of funny. And I was wearing the hippopotamus one. So I was just, just immensely embarrassed anyway that I had these like hippopotamus underwear on. So, yeah. Anyway, 
All right, so we're gonna stitch this on. I'm gonna put my draw cord in this casing first. Uh, let's see here, let's get this kind of flat out. And let's see, do we have the full? Oh, uh, super bright, all right, huh? Let's see, oh, my hand kind of helps it. So I'm gonna put this in here and then we'll sew down the casing. I think they're right to say you, should, you might wanna put the um, draw cord through the holes and behind this casing before you start sewing. You know, so. so we'll do that. I should have done this maybe at my pattern table, huh? See if I can just get this under here. Kind of pulling it straight across. I think it's gonna be funny when I do this, so. Oh, interesting, Ray. Well, it, I think it just depends. <laughs> I think <laughs> um, I think it just depends, Ray, because I know what you mean. Like sometimes I think the curve is helpful. It just depends on probably how the upper part of the jacket is shaped. So if there's some shaping at the above the waist, I think that that would warrant you wanting to do a little bit of a curve. But I don't know. Like if there was fisheye darts. Maybe you would want it straight across. If there's a waist seam, I would follow the waist seam. Um, but if there's, you know, some sort of, if it looks like it needs it, you might move it up. But if it looks fine, I would leave it. I think it just depends. I, I was really kind of trying to make this parallel to the hem all the way down. And I realized um, that that was just kind of, I need to change this brightness. Um, it was gonna look weird. It was gonna look very curved. The hem does not look very curved, but it made it look like it was, you know what I mean? So. All right. I would have done this off camera, but I, did, I felt like that would have been cheating. Certainly would be easier on a bigger table. I definitely don't want a whole lot of um, draw cord hanging out of each hole either, you know? So this is that center back area that I'm trying to ease in the lining to this casing. I can see like why they wanted to add a lining. People were like, oh, this would be so great to line this, you know? and. Um, I just don't think that having the waist casing sewn this way worked with lining the jacket. It's it's definitely would have been possible, but you know, it's like they would have had to redesign the whole thing to be able to do that. So and I think like I'm trying to think like how you would get away with how you would get around it. Um Maybe you'd put a waist seam in the lining. I don't know. Sometimes there's just not a very elegant solution. Okay. What are you guys up to? <laughs> so this is just barely making it across. All right, I'm gonna flip it over and see how I think. If I, if I see anything that glares at me, um, I just whack the camera or something. 
Uh, no, I mean, Penny, I like, because then you wouldn't be cinching up the lining. Yeah, but I think that that could have its own issues, you know? I wonder if um, you could put a, a like a little elastic at the side seams of the lining, you know, just like cinch a little bit right there. So it's always kind of cinched. I'd have to think it through. I know there's solutions. I've actually drafted patterns for that, but I just, honestly, they just, I think I'm just so, my head's so deep in this project that's hard for me to think of solutions without trying to shoehorn it into this jacket. So, so yeah, you're gonna, like, there's the pleat right here, right? It's this big pleat. And so here's my side seam. So you can see there's a little bit of ease here. Here's my casing right here. See, so I'm going to get this. So we're going to see it stitched down like this once I'm done sewing. So, oh, are you mom? Are, are you Terry? Are you prepping for a project? Oh, cool. The Monroe turtleneck. Nice. So tight lately. All right, let's do it. Can you see okay? No, you can't. <laughs> that auto brightness though, huh? <laughs> That's awesome, Sydney. I have some very funny Outlander stories that I cannot tell right now, <laughs> but I will, maybe in March. <laughs> Just remind me. <laughs> Has to do with some birthday stuff. Yes, Michelle. Yeah, I think that could work. Oh, me too, Terry. I was actually just realizing that some of my pa my fabrics aren't pre-washed and some are. I, I used to just bring fabric home. Like it wouldn't even enter the studio. It would just go right into my bag that goes home each day. You know, like when it gets, arrives. And I would pre-wash it. And I haven't been that great about that. Probably because I bought so many things at once. And I just put it on the shelf to get it away, you know. It's going to be on the Christmas class. You'll remind me. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, the things I was Googling yesterday and, and discovering, I was like, okay, I need to get back to work. Um, all right, so let's brighten this up a tiny bit. Do you guys want me to take off the auto brightness? The auto brightness is on, but I can do this and just brighten it up a little. Hmm. All right, uh, you know what? I'm gonna change to cream bobbin thread. Oh, interesting, yeah. You don't mind that, uh, cause I thought about the tea house, Michelle, but I didn't know you were okay with the, um, the placket yoke on that. Perfect. And that has a, uh, a squared off sleeve, so that'll work for your bishop sleeve. Um, also, I don't know if any of you saw Terry's looking for a certain kind of pattern and she posted a picture in the Facebook group. If anyone knows of one. Wait, I want to look at this again. And make sure none of my like white. See, I, I don't know if you can see this, but you can see my, I know the autofocus is off, but you can see the little blue dots between my white stitches. I'm okay with that because that is better than the reverse since I'm sewing with the blue on top. Looks better when I adjust, yeah. So I've adjusted it right now, but I still have the auto brightness on. I just don't like how it changes all the time. It's really, in, in person, it's pretty dark. Like I can barely see it because I have the light on the camera, the table. <laughs> oh, you are cool, Terry. Yeah. 
Yeah, you know, Michelle, one of the things I've done with that tea house dress uh, lately is um, I've been putting in a back waist seam. I love that dress. And um, I really want the back to be um, shaped and not have to wear the belt. So I've, been, I've, I've made like three or four of those and I keep changing it. All right, let's do this. Oh, I cannot see. So what I'm going for is as straight as possible with this massive draw cord in here. See on Twitch, you can enable um, voice chat, meaning you can type in a message and it would come over in audio and then you could yell at me, change the brightness. <laughs> So after I do this, um, I'm going to put the little majiggies on the ends of the draw cord and then I'm going to put snaps on. Kind of just pulling it straight, making sure I don't feel like I'm catching anything else under there. is a brat. All right, this is when I should probably be sewing over the tucks. Wouldn't it be cool if there was like such a thing as like a, you know, a, a glass a throat plate bed of the machine with a camera up there. You could see what was going on. Kind of like your, uh, you know, those rear view cameras on a car. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. Also, probably stuff you don't want to know. <laughs> Looks a little wider here than here, huh? I recommend um, ironing this long edge really, really good before you put it on your jacket. It was a little tricky. Oh, my jacket's falling off the back. Sorry, it's so bright. It so doesn't look like that in person. All right, so right now I'm going to be going through this facing, which kind of bugs me. I don't know why. I, I don't know why that bugs me. It shouldn't. Okay. Let's go the other way. Actually, I'm going to start from the other end again and do it. Should we look at the back? Let's see how the back looks. I'm kind of curious. Well, that's not bad. Look at that. Oh, look, I didn't get any tucks in there. I'll have one little one here. Okay. I stand corrected. I stand corrected. The best kind, right? I kind of evenly distributed that pleat amount. So... And then I kind of pressed it all, kind of steamed it a little, but I wasn't sure if that was even going to help. All right. I have this little, um, the little draw cord thingies right there. Okay, let's do this. I 
I can kind of see my white stitches there. My bobbin. Oh, maybe that's not what that is. It could be, though. Hard to tell with the uh, speckles, you know? I keep forgetting to properly thank Hearts Fabric, but they are, they sponsored a lot of this, so it's great. And if you, and all this fabric, this is the Essex um, Linen. I, it might say Navy Speckle. And then the um, cotton print lining is the, um, it's a Sarah Watts design and she designs for Ruby Star Society and it's from her Florida collection. And you can get 10% off anything from Hearts by using this little, <laughs> right here. Oh, my hand is like, it's right here. <laughs> that tones it down. See, I wish it would stay like this. Maybe I'll keep my arm over here. I want to get the center back. I have a center back seam in my casing because I didn't want to cut into the full width of my fabric just for a casing. So I just put it on the, uh, I just put it on the um, two pieces with the center back. Oh, okay, cool, Michelle. Thanks for telling me that because I feel really bad. I will um, miss requests for like two months. It's really hard for me to see the requests without doing all these, you know, tapping on all kinds of weird stuff to find that spot again. They've been getting better. They'll even, they even say now, you have requests. I'm like, thank you for telling me. <laughs> but I have to open up the app to actually see it. Oh man, I really want uh, my seam to line up on the top here, but let's see if I can get it to. See if I can get this eased in a little and still straight. Yeah, it's pretty good. Gotta remember this waste casing, even if you don't get it great, um, I wouldn't sweat it because it's gonna get cinched and those little wrinkles are gonna be there forever. You know what I mean? It's gonna cover up any of your weird you know, stuff that happens. That's what I'm banking on. All right, we are done. Okay, let's cut these. Oh, does that bug us? Kind of. It kind of looks ready to wear, leaving it like that, doesn't it? <laughs> you need an interior decorator, man. I I am really bad at that stuff too, Sydney. I'm such a staunch like. I don't want to buy anything new. <laughs> And I'm really into handmade and like um, handmade things by other people. So my house, like it's it's like pretty empty in some ways, but at the same time it can be a little cluttered. And um, like my living room looks like, in our bedroom is our bedroom is looking less like a college dorm room. Like as I put a little chair and a half in there the other day because I needed space in my um, my room, my like my room where my sewing is gonna be. So all right, this looks pretty good. Oh, I didn't get this seam on that one. Well, whatever. Don't tell anybody. Well, let's look at the inside. Let's see. So I have another little tuck there. This is no big deal at all. Huh, that looks pretty good. I'm fine with that. He's a marker. Exact. I've totally done that before, Michelle. I think the wax is gonna cover that up, honestly. Oh, I gotta remember to get my um, hair thingy. Okay, so this this uh, draw cord isn't very long. So let me make sure it's as long as it can go. I was worried it was gonna hang. I see people's pictures of this and the draw cord's hanging down really low. I don't really like that. So um, I think like, hanging down like that much is good, you know? I don't want it to just poke out the hole. I think that would look kind of weird. But you know, once you cinch it, it gets really long. So you might test it out. I 
All right, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Okay, so I think I put this on. Should use some of my wax. I should have cut, tied the knot before you cut it. If you haven't done that yet, tie your knot before you cut it. It's pretty hard to, uh, and a knot takes actually a lot of length. I want it really, really small. Okay. Let's trim that a little bit. All right. Um, what well, you guys talked a lot? I asked our teacher friend about possible window covering plans. She answered me with something about it being a lifetime defining thing years ago. Now it's right. <laughs> no, I would just use a Sharpie, Adina. <laughs> yeah, it hasn't been a lifetime yet. <laughs> we don't have any window coverings at our house. <laughs> And um, recently it's become an issue because some of the younger birds are running into it. That are half height. <coughs> I really like bottom up things when it's people can see through. Oh, I need some water. Oh! All right, I need to get some water and I need to take that out because I need to put the cord thingy. Oh yeah, I got the um, hardware kit from um, Maker's Fabric. It's really nice. I need ply. Yeah, exactly. I do. I thought about getting those out, but this isn't going too bad. So interesting facts. Things things people don't think about is these kinds of little things. Um, they're kind of hotly contested in the in outdoor world in factories because they can give you repetitive motion injuries installing them the people who put them on the garments and so now they come open like this already pressed until you push on it the very first time and then it undoes it and so that way they don't have to do it twice because you, you, it's a pretty firm you know it cuts it cuts down on that kind of repetitive motion injury potential, you know. Hey Lou, how's it going? Good morning. It's early at your place. Yeah, they they had different finish. Oh, there are different finishes. But don't ask me to quote you what they were. <laughs> yeah, that looks pretty nice, huh? Fonse. All right, so now we are at, let's see here. So I, okay, so just to recap, I still need to hand sew this, tack my hems, uh, but I can still put the snaps on and wax a bit. So shall we go over there and let's look at the uh, snaps. Do -do -do -do. I gotta move the microphone. Oh, 
I gotta move the I've gotta move the monitor too. I'm gonna try it on because I want to. I'm pretty proud of this one. The casing's nice, it makes it all feel kind of like put together, you know? Goes over my this shirt really nicely. Yeah, I think I have a full screen set up. Let's see here. It's a little high, huh? <laughs> so when I have it cinched all the way, it does make a really long. See, this is why I wanted it on the inside. You know what I mean? How's it look in the back? Look good. Can you even see? <laughs> Yay! This is how it looks. Cinched up. Oh, you can't even see that. <laughs> oh. Let's put that auto exposure. I have two pairs of glasses now. That looks pretty cool, huh? So that's how much hangs down when it's cinched. So, see, and the thing is, like, I think if I were to, like, over design this for myself, you couldn't see it? Oh, okay. I'll put it on at the end. I'll put it on my dress form maybe so I can turn around and look at it. But um, you can tether this end to your seam. So if you can put two, so you have to have something like a, um, like say you put this little ring through here, right? Put your cord through this ring and then you put both cords through the hole and then you, t you can tether one end you can make it so that you can, you're, you're cinching it, but all that's happening is you're getting a loop like this, and that's all that's hanging down in your jacket. I don't know if you can even see that. But you have to tether it. Is that bright enough for you guys? I'm gonna show you on here. So basically, if you could, you need to put something like a little ring so that um, when you put both cords through the hole of something like this, that the whole thing won't come through. So you need like a knot, even if you tie a knot in your cord, then you have both of them through the cord lock and you tether this end, you can adjust it and all you end up having hanging down in your jacket you know, is a loop. You don't have this long dingleberry. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're welcome, Ray. Thanks for being here. You're the reason I have this beautiful coat. I might, I'm even, t I'm kind of tempted to give it to Hearts Fabric like soon while it looks great, you know? before it gets uh, lots of wear and tear. All right, so got my wax kit out. So one of the things I didn't buy 
from Otter Wax was this uh, like a paddle. And I don't know about you guys, if you have something, do you guys know what this is? So the, instead of using a scrubby sponge when I do dishes, I have a scrubby sponge, but I use this to scrape stuff off the dishes because this doesn't have to get sterilized or anything. It's just for cleaning. So I can scrape stuff off and rinse it off and put it, I have like a little coffee cup and I put it on my windowsill. You can try, Ray. I might, I think if I'm in um, the control room, I can allow it. Let me see. Let's try it. Oh, it might not let me in the control room because I haven't set it up. Let's see. Oh, I'm scared to, I'm scared to click any of these buttons. I do not understand the new control room. You can try it. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's just a piece of bamboo that's a scraper for cleaning dishes. And I have two of them. One that I use all the time and then this one, which is almost brand new still. Because at the time, I didn't know if I'd ever come across them again, so I bought two. So I brought it in to push the wax into the coat. And my apron too. All right, so let's, let's set this aside and we're going to do our... Um... Yeah, I have one of silicone too. Um, and someone gave it to me for baking, thinking it was a dough scraper. And so I put it in my baking drawer, but the other day I actually saw the same one for sale in the like dish cleaning area. I was like, no wonder that's so tiny. <laughs> yeah. I love washing dishes. <laughs> that's so funny because when the news was doing this like, um, recap of all the books that they liked from 2021 they had all these different people from different parts of the news organization share their book favorite book of the year for 2020 one of them the only one i remember the one that i was interested in was how to wash dishes and i was like what kind of crazy person am i <laughs> nice adina and you have it nice <laughs> that's awesome share us your secrets <laughs> Oh, that's pretty cool. Did you put the link in there? I didn't see it. Okay, so I have these pattern pieces for the placement of the snaps. And we're going to put, since this is right over left, we're going to put the female side of the snap on the flap here. And we're actually going to... Yeah, we're going to mark it on here on this side. So my seam allowance. I don't think I'll put this snap in right here, but I'll go to this one right here. So let's just pin this to my coat. This would be great to do on my felt ironing board because I could just go, <laughs> you know, so I feel like it distorts it a little by putting in the pins like this. You could just take the measurements too, you know. Um, I think I'm gonna go like this. I wish this was a little bit sharper. I don't have pointy, I just don't have pointy wax, you know? Pointy wax. Okay, so basically these are, They look like four inches apart, four inches apart and three eighths of an inch away from the fold line. And then our hood. Oh yeah, Terry, I have that thing. I love that thing. The thing is so awesome. Do you guys know what that is? I'll show you what it is. It's really cool. It is really cool.
Yeah, I use this all the time as well. See, this is a little bit, you know, you could do that. This is as far as this goes. So it wouldn't work for four inch spacing. But in general, if you're doing uh, buttons on a button down shirt and not something where the, like these snaps are basically just holding the snap down. It's like a storm flap. So if you don't need the um, spacing of like a shirt, you're probably like, if you need some bigger, you're going to, you can't use your simplex, but this is three and a half inches. And that is about like as far apart as you usually would go on a shirt. Yeah. Right. Terry. I think I remember that. Like when I finally got this, I was like, Oh, this thing's pretty, pretty cool. So that's what that is. And when I remember to use it, <laughs> cause there's times when I forget. <laughs> it's so annoying. I cut my seam allowances down to a quarter inch. Oh, so that's interesting. Oh, I did it on a different pattern piece. I was like, wait a minute. So if this was five eighths inch seam, is this not five eighths inch seam? Cause look at that, that puts that snap like a quarter of an inch away. Wait, this is five eighths. Oh my gosh, I was kind of crazy there. All right, no wonder. <laughs> okay. So that's about three eighths away as well. Okay, so let's center that. I think um, that's still so close to the edge, you know? I, what I, I'm glad that I, I did, I did get rid of all my seam allowance. I only have quarter inch seams in here and that's great because, um, otherwise your seam allowances might be in an awkward spot. They may actually work out better because your seam allowances might be back here. So it's just something to think about. Let's get rid of this. It's a little, oh, it's a little thread. I thought it was a tuck. Cause it does look a little tucky there, doesn't it? It looks a little tucky there. Did I fix that one on that other side? I did, right? All right, so we have this. I'm just gonna probably pop the holes in this right off the bat so then I don't lose where they go. Yeah, I think it was about 18. What? Lou? Oh, there's not someone that carries in there. Yeah, pleats would be good. Um, you can look at every other time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. D yeah. True. Malin, you're so smart. You could do that. Yeah, yeah, see? See, that's when you guys are like, I couldn't sew in front of people live on camera. See, that's where it comes in. When I'm just like, don't think of things, you know? <laughs> I mean, I can blame it on that. Maybe I wouldn't even come up with it at all anyway. <laughs> so. Okay, so let's see here. I got my pieces. And I kind of want to separate these out, which I had planned to do and I forgot. Um, what do I have? Here we go. This will work. Put all the tops in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, three, six, seven, eight extra. I 
think these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is the same as the bottom, right? I don't know, I think that these go in the bottom. I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Hey, DMAC, how's it going? Thanks. I love this shirt. I love the asymmetry of this shirt. We made it, um, in two different fabrics. Well, we made it this one, and then I made another one in like this stiffer fabric, and um, it's more like a sweater. All right, we're installing the snaps. I'm looking at the tutorial to remind myself. <laughs> Even though we just did this. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so these go over here. And then these go on the side. Let's make sure. Sorry, let me look at this. I know we just did this, but man, I am making sure you guys, this is it. All right, yep. Yeah. One, two. So basically the cap and this are the, the top snap, okay? I'm good, I'm good. Just finishing up a raincoat that I made. Turned out really great. I lined it and um, we're waterproofing it with water wax. We've got pockets. Sorry, the camera's a little dark today. I'll brighten it up when we I'll brighten it up soon, but it gets a little bright, bright. <laughs> well, maybe Lou, maybe you need to, you know, open a store in New Zealand. <laughs> you have nothing better to do, right? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. Okay. You guys want to see the tutorial? Just let me know. <clears throat> I'm just, I just searched uh, installing snaps, closet core, and I came up with theirs. This hardware looks really similar to this hardware as well. It's got the little stars. These have little stars on this part of it. All right, we're gonna make a hole. Yeah, okay, I don't know why I'm doubting it today. Scary, oh, I don't need that. Okay, so let's get the die <clears throat> and then Let's look at that. Um, we have it three eighths inch and away. I think I'm gonna move this up a tiny bit so that it's a little more centered because these caps are actually kind of big. Look at this. So that's how it's gonna look on there. And I'm gonna zoom this in a little bit too. You guys want it zoomed in a little bit? Why not, right? And then we'll brighten it up a tiny bit. Is that doing anything? Why isn't that brightening it up? What the heck? It didn't brighten it up at all. Let's brighten it up a little bit more. It's not even changing. Hmm. That's, uh, I'm clicking on and off the auto exposure. That's not even changing the brightness right there. It, it isn't on my screen. Hopefully it's not on you guys. 
Yeah, I think that's the thing, Lou, is like if there's not a lot of people needing this kind of thing, a mom and pop shop's not going to carry it. It's almost like you need a specialty or maybe if there was a um, place that specialized in other things that kind of dovetail with sewing this kind of thing, that might help, you know. It was interesting looking at the Otter Wax hashtag on Instagram and the accounts I discovered were really interesting. You know, they, they were definitely this kind of genre of um, lifestyle, and which is really cool to see, you know. People that definitely in that DIY or homesteading or living outdoors or like, live, like living a lot outdoors, a rurally, natural fiber, all really cool things. So it was kind of, I love when you kind of veer off into a whole genre and that kind of stuff i have a lot of those kinds of accounts on my feed but more for farming and agriculture and not for sewing i have a little bit but not really so all right um here's my die and i want to move this up to about right here is that gonna bug you guys with the microphone Tell me. The microphone's attached to this table for once. I can mount it to the stand though, so tell me. I'm getting the little, see the little plugs I created? <laughs> It's fine? Cool, thank you. Are we committed or what? So those people that really hate making buttonholes, would you do this? Would this make you more comfortable to do? <laughs> Makes your ears vibrate. Are you listening on headphones? <laughs> really? Gosh. All right, well, give me a little bit of it. The um, there's a, the microphone's on an arm with springs, and for me, I hear the springs going boing. All right, I'm ruining my little pad, but that's okay. It's just a bunch of layers of stiffener sewn together so that I didn't hurt my surface. Okay, so I have a little anvil here. And I want to make sure I'm using the right tool. Where's my little guide here? Okay. So I'm using this one here, I'm pretty sure. Yep. Okay. We're going to turn it over. Here we go. <laughs> DMAC gets that reference, I bet. <laughs> um, I'm just like surfing through because, yeah, don't want to make any mistakes, but this looks good. 
It's so easy sometimes that I, I kind of second guess. All right, we're going to hammer a little bit again. Oh, you did too, Adina. That's awesome. Okay, here we go. That wasn't enough. That one, I don't know about that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, it's kind of crooked. This is my problem. <laughs> I, this table is feels a little, a little not great. Oh, the snap doesn't feel so good. Okay, I think that righted it. I think that's okay. I don't wanna like put one of these on here and I can't get it off though. Hmm, that one, I don't know about this one. You can't really see it, but good. it's a little bit. All right, we'll just keep trying. The others went so good on the pockets, remember those? Remember that? That was like a lifetime ago. That was better. That was way better. So there's like these two little side things in here. And this one is, it's a little munched. So we'll have to see if I can remove that if I need to. Good thing it's at the bottom, I guess, right? Because I think I would use my snaps at the top more often. I got it from Maker's Fabric. It, they were kind of hard to find because everywhere was out of stock. So a place called Maker's Fabric. I just kind of did a search and found them. And um, they ended up even being in California. They shipped like immediately. It was awesome. And um, you can get the zipper and the draw cord in tons of colors. You just write it in the comments which color you want. You, and you look at... You have to look at their zipper, or their draw cord listing that's separate to see all the colors they have. And then um, just put it in the comment section and they say to do that when you, if you buy the whole kit. So the whole, I bought the whole kit with the, the um, tools as well, these little tools. Some folks already have those. So if you just don't need the tools and she just says, you know, that's a little discounted because this is, I don't know why it, it's just, it's, um, doesn't look polished like these are. I don't care. This makes me nervous because of rivets. You know, because ri with rivets on jeans, you have to kind of um, make sure you're not going to, these are kind of getting wonky. I've been like hammering on the side here when it feels like it's getting a little tilty. Feels okay though, okay. <laughs> I'm such an amateur at this. Okay. All in the name of experimenting on my stuff for you guys. There we go. So like when I put this on here, I'm putting it in this Post. So see, there's this little divot right here. So I put this in this on the post, right? 
So I'm putting it on the jacket like this and you have to keep this straight. So what's happening is you can see how this still wiggles on here because the post is right here, right? This doesn't affect it. So sometimes this starts going down a little crooked, even though I'm not touching that little thing. This right here in the middle is smashing down and that's probably what's happening. I'm not being perfectly straight up and down. Yeah, so. <laughs> what reminds you of the Peter Pan at ride? Oh, the here we go. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I hear you on that. Okay, did I not do this one yet? No, I didn't. Okay. So I'm trying to make sure the jacket's not pulling. This one's bad, bad. Dang, look at that. Do you see that? Oh, yeah, this one really got off. Oh, no. Maker's Fabric. Oh, that came right off. Okay. Um, this is it. I know the name is a little generic. <laughs> See you, Lou. Nice seeing you. This is it. That one went really badly. Let's try it again. better. I think. There's plenty in here, thankfully. I used one each on the uh, pockets and I still have like uh, three, six in here. So I'm gonna have probably five left if all three of these go okay. So I have five mistakes left. <laughs> Part of it's that I can really see on this um, edge here where I'm going. You know, I can see it like immediately. This one's a little winging out, isn't it? I probably swung that way. Oh, it did. So this is, see, look at that. That's what's happening is they're mov moving that way. Hmm. I may have to fiddle with these afterward. I wonder if it's the um, table, this table is too absorbent of the pressure. Okay, that one looks okay. I feel like that's kind of good, tapping it down and making it flush for sure. <sighs> I'd rather be sewing. This is the kind of things that, like when I get a little like, I'm not really that nervous, honestly, I have to say, <laughs> but I should be. And, um, I would come up with a backup plan, right? Like, what do I do if none of these work? It's kind of a hard spot to have a backup plan for. You're kind of all said and done at this point. Okay. 
I need a martini now. All right. Let's see here. Now, oh, was that, did I just throw one in there that was bad? Oh no, this one's, this one's bad. Throw that one away. And where's my cat? This one away. Okay. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Squish. Oh yeah, Walter. You had to add snaps. Got any tips? <laughs> they just kind of go like, they kind of slide over like that. So that's why. Okay. This is a little, they're a little crooked. And I think that's, um, can you see that? How this one's crooked? So here is the, here is the edge of this snap where, and that's the edge of the cap. It's like a full eighth inch over. So pro what I'll probably do is try and like, see if I can write it by tapping this over like this. I don't know, this is probably a bad idea. But um, if not, I'll just remove it. Cause it makes it look crooked. Oh, the lacing holds, yeah. <laughs> yep, you've driven me to drink. Okay. So now we're gonna use this one for the other pieces. And we're gonna mark our other side. Are you acting sticky right there? Don't you dare. Okay. Looking professional, but I am an amateur. You know? Okay. Um, I want I want a razor blade. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to just sharpen my wax um here. So that I can, um, you know, mark it a little easier. Now I can mark where my um, snaps are. Can you even see? Below zero, oh my God. So remember what I did before was I put these on here like this. Put the uh, other side on here. Like that. I think that'll work. It's really close to this seam right here. 
Makes me a little nervous. I feel like then it'll get like this, you know, like kind of wonky. Oh, you know, I saw um, Andrea uh, Soda Fit is having a dance party tonight and like something special is going on. Okay. This one's going to go through my waist casing. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> This is my scientific method of uh, <laughs> marking. <laughs> yeah, I guess zero degrees is the same anywhere, huh? This is my match is pretty good here. There's a win. <laughs> okay. see all my wax this one right here I am doubting let's see here and one thing too you can go like this lift it up and make sure that that little mark is in line with the hole of the snap and see like this one could come out more like right here So let's start from the top and look. <laughs> oh yeah, this could go a little more over here. I recorded a video yesterday on making a, um, I used some stretch lace and made a t-shirt, but I made it a little longer, like a nightgown. Kind of saucy. It turned out really great, though. Oh, hopefully I'm going to edit it today. I love how I just think I can just edit a video real quick, like. It doesn't work like that. Unzip this a little bit. Just double checking and then we're gonna get to it. I think it's like right here. I'm in full try hard mode, you guys. One more. I don't understand wind chill. We don't have that here. <laughs> I have never in my whole life heard the term wind chill when describing any weather prediction in California. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Michelle, where do you live, Michelle? I don't even know where you live. Okay. Why is this one way over here? We even double checked that one. 
these are all lining up right along the zipper thing here. But that one is kind of far away. Let's just make sure. Sorry. Even when I double checked it, it um, was over there. Maybe it wasn't zipped all the way up and it was pulling apart. No, it, it goes there. Okay, fine. Uh. Oh yeah, like our, my parents used to have a cabin there. They bought like a little um, uh, cabin from the forest tree service. It was rustic, <laughs> like over a hundred years old. It wasn't a luxury cabin, but it was pretty, um, my dad just loved it. Pretty cool. All right, this little, where's my loud thingy? All right, we're doing some holds again. Let me briefly look at the directions, make sure I'm not thinking about anything. Sorry, I keep adjusting my glasses. I know that's annoying. I just got them and um, they adjusted them, but I gotta go back again. All right, let's see here. So now we're using these two pieces here. So the longer post piece and the one that looks like, you know, a snap. Okay, those are the two pieces. And then we're gonna use this tool, the bigger, fatter tool, as opposed to this one, which had the little point on it, okay? And your anvil, and this is the die, the hole cutter. That's all this is. You can use an awl if you want. Okay. You're gonna do it from the snap side. the part that goes into the cap, okay? <laughs> yeah, Dina, I feel it on that so much on the glasses thing. Really sick of it. Really sick of the glasses thing. Okay, here we go. So this is kind of in my seam allowance, which is making it a little wonky. It makes me a little nervous. Oh, I don't want to do this into my table though. Where's my thing here? I feel like after this ran, I feel like the prescription they gave me is making my eyes worse. <laughs> I doubt that's true, but that's how it feels. It made me feel like there was a conspiracy to make me more dependent upon glasses. <laughs> I glance up and then I see pickling food. <laughs> what are you guys talking about? <laughs> oh, interesting. Oh, yeah, right? Yeah, the uh, person that's been helping me fit mine, he's very nice and friendly, but um, I can tell he gets really nervous if I'm like, this isn't quite right. It's like he, maybe he's been scarred by really negative interactions or people being extremely um, mean. And it's um, frustrating because I'm just like, dude, like, it's not a criticism, it's a fact. <laughs> they don't work. See my little thread, because this part's still attached to the jacket, sometimes that is still also attached to the little hole that I just removed, and that's why I'm being really careful when I lift it up. I don't want to just yank it off because I could put a run in my jacket. Make sure you get this straight up and down. Three more holes. We are committed. Okay, two more holes. Last hole. Okay. 
Yeah, exactly, Ray. Yeah, Nancy, right? I know. I'm just like, what do you mean by better or worse? Yeah, and that little line, it, I feel like that little line on my glasses messed my neck up. And so I'm really picky about it, but they don't seem to think that I know what I want, and I don't like that, you know? And when I got my glasses, I was like, look, here's the deal. I need to stand at a table and be able to read a computer monitor that's 30 inches away and look at something right here. And they just want to go, computer glasses. I'm like, yeah, I'm reading a computer, but it's 30 inches away, <laughs> you know? Okay. Here we go. Now we're going to flip it over. Holes. <laughs> Let's start from the bottom. This hole you might need to make a little bigger because this post is a little bigger than the other one was. Oof, that is pretty thick right there. My zipper is right here. I don't really understand how this works. I don't believe it. Like I've done, we just did this like a few days ago, didn't we? How is this going to work? Yeah, these are the right pieces. Okay. Here's the tool. Goes over this bit, over that. These are a lot easier to set, by the way. Good. We need easier right now. We want to get to the waxing, right, Adina? <laughs> A lot of thicknesses here. to go oh my god all right we'll fix those in a little bit so i had to do it from this side <gasps> sorry 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 the other one you do from the wrong side of the snap well you don't you do it from the um snapping side of the snap and you do this one from the snapping side of the snap but what's confusing me is the snapping side of the snap on the other one is underneath and the snapping side of the snap on this one is on top yeah you're right zach i just figured it out why didn't you say something sooner zach it's all your fault just kidding you guys are here for the drama <laughs> sewing drama right it's funny what can confuse you <laughs> oh I'm sorry Adina I did, didn't I do a little, I did a little sample once. Were you not there for that? It's really easy. I'm just going to rub the bar on there. That's it. That's all I'm going to do. <laughs> and then I'm going to use my little wood uh, paddle to kind of push it into the fabric. Getting it, you know, pertain, 
paying particular attention to like seams like this. You know, I won't I won't probably wax this. I might, but I would wax up to here. <laughs> oh man. Who needs whatever that reality show is on um Netflix right now? You got me blowing out your eardrums with my hammer. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right, Terry. <laughs> yep, look at that. <laughs> Whoops. Those look pretty good, though. This one, I know it looks crooked, but that's where it wants to be. And on the other side, it looked straight. So we're leaving it. I love that this one's right here at the casing. That's nice. They planned that maybe. But, you know, you adjust this casing based on your waist. So um, I wonder how easy it'll be to remove these. You know? We'll see. Probably not very easy is my guess. You know, I'll probably have to use some pliers. But we'll get it off and we'll put it on. At least with something like this, the hole that's there is, you know, it's still usable. Okay. Another thing I need to do. <laughs> All right, Adina, I'm going to start waxing. So I'm actually going to put my apron on. <laughs> Ray, you're you're a multitasker. I do watch usually two to three Twitch streams at once. And it's really funny because I will sometimes catch other people watching the same two or three streams. And uh, a couple times, and if anyone's ever done this before, they know that this is this happens. <clears throat> uh, sometimes what will happen is I'll comment in one in response to another and only the person that's doing the same thing I am notices and it's pretty funny. They're like, wrong chat. <laughs> and I'm like, whoops. Yeah. And it's not like the streamer thinks you should only be watching theirs, but. All right, so here's my bar of otter wax right here. You can see I used it a little bit. They say a large bar is going to do my jacket. We'll see. Um, doesn't seem like this goes out of stock, so I can get another, maybe a small bar to finish off or something. I don't think I'll do this all in one sitting. That seems kind of uh, like a lot. I'm going to get a little piece of fabric or something to set down. Let's see here. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Ray. It's really common because a lot of people like this one game. Like, they'll like more than one streamer who played that game, you know? And the one game I like and watch a lot of is a pretty tight community, and so that's why I see the same people. And, like, I'll be watching the, a streamer who actually moderates for another stream, and th since their stream is smaller, they can moderate and stream at the same time. <laughs> it's pretty funny. You have to, Nancy. Yep. <laughs> okay. So this, I'm going to start with this side because um, I've already stitched down this welt pocket here. Let's move over here. So I already stitched down the sides of this welt pocket. Hand stitched them. I still need to hand stitch. I'm going to tether my side seams there. I did stitch the opening down here closed at the bottom of the zipper. That went really well. It was really easy. I actually hung it on my dress form and did it at eye level, which was really nice. So, yeah. So, yeah, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to go for it. And so they just say to rub it <clears throat> on there. And it'll get shiny and stuff. I'm gonna slide this down a little bit. Maybe I can. Yeah, there we go. It's like, you know, when the Parmesan gets kind of uh, 
<laughs> too short to great. You can see the wrinkles of my lining and my pocket. That's what we're seeing right now. <laughs> Tina, oh my God, that's so funny. It's so funny how we can confuse ourselves. So you want this even, it sounds like. You want it really even because you don't want any bits that can get wet, right? So I'm gonna try and get into this crevice really good. And if you see close-ups of them doing this, you'll see like little bits of wax sitting there. And then you can use the paddle to kind of push it into the fabric better and into these little crevices. <clears throat> Any of these needle holes. Ooh, I kind of like how it looks after I've been pushing it in there. So this is my process now. I'm just gonna go through the whole jacket. <laughs> Dina, <laughs> yeah, I know I'm like, I was rushing. I'm like, I'll fix my snaps later just so you can see a little bit. But this is basically how I understand it. I have never done this before. And um, I actually thought about um, trying it out on the Sorrento bucket hat because I have an extra, like I have two. So I was like, oh, maybe I'll waterproof one. So I, you know, I think that that's a good, oh, I just got wax on my zipper. Um, a good trial. You can do boots, um, belts. I see people doing all kinds of stuff. I saw a dog coat. But just make sure you're using the right wax for the project because um, they have different ones. This will take me a while. I see people kind of like come back to it over and over. It's getting, it usually gets darker in color. Mine gets lighter. It's quite um, tacky right now. And I think you would do this normally, like towards the end, pushing it into the fabric. This is why I lined my coat so it wouldn't be against my skin. Um, I did it because, well, sewing a coat with this much detail in the waxed cotton sounded a little kind of grueling, to be honest. You know? <laughs> Nancy. Uh, um, I have a hair in my eye. I also have ordered wax cotton twice and they were so different from one another that it made me nervous ordering wax cotton without trying it first. Yeah, I don't know if you do that with this one, but you do with their, they have a pot of wax you can melt and brush on. And I think that that would work for this jacket, but there was something about it that made me choose to do the bar because the that, that method sounds far more appealing personally. It seems faster because you'd have like a melted pot of wax and you brush it on. But I also didn't want it to go through my lining to my skin. It's not irritating. I just didn't want to really, I just, you know, just logically. Yeah, probably, Walter. That's probably a really good idea, actually, to wax before I put the snaps on. Yeah, good idea. See, we're learning, we're learning. <clears throat> you see um, on their site for like tutorials and stuff that they're doing finished products all the time. They're not catering to a crowd that sews their own clothes. So um, a lot of their tutorials are uh, how to wax the such and such jacket, how to wax the such and such boots. Um, and they probably have like um, collaborations or, you know what I mean? Oh, my glasses. They fit so well a couple of days ago. Um, they have probably have collaborations or something. Maybe they get one for free and then show how to do that.
Oh, I've read The Red Queen in my book club. <laughs> really long time ago, actually. Yeah, you, you're hosting a, a book club? That's cool. And so is this book club, you're like going to book club soon and it's in a, um, how are you doing it? Like in a Zoom? <laughs> Dina. Oh, it's called On the Same Page? Oh, neat. So maybe I can break off a piece and get closer to my snaps there. You gotta remember the other, the other flap is going to go over this. So I don't have to be too critical here, but it'd be good because you don't want your seam wetting out. That's what they call when it's like uh, the moisture's getting into the seam and kind of traveling through to the garment. I don't want with this wets out to kind of wick over to here, you know? This is not my torrential downpour jacket, you know? This is my fashion jacket, fashion raincoat jacket. Isn't this really fascinating? <laughs> you thought the snaps were boring. <laughs> Let's get my casings flat. Oh, hello, Janeka. How's it going? Oh, you did. Was it the Otter Bar Wax? Ooh, so that's good to know. Oh. Oh, nice, Patty. Uh, some shorts and a camp shirt. Do you have a pattern? I actually am looking for a shorts pattern. <laughs> right, Mullen? <laughs> I am a traitor to my title. <laughs> it is whack whack live today, not so so. So I'm whacking the wax on. Yeah, so I know like you, they suggest using a heat gun to um, soften up formerly waxed garments. I love how they assume everyone has a heat gun. <laughs> but a hair dryer, you can do a hair dryer too. Maybe this bar will be enough. I think I'll know once I've sewn, or I mean waxed half of it, you know? Maybe I should mark where the halfway point of this bar is right let's see so maybe it's stuck out to right here um, so if that were centered I'm gonna roughly mark the center of my bar. I'm sure I'm gonna ditch the paper soon, but I can always put it back on for this. I can't get that cap off because my hands are waxy. Oh, me, Patty, my pattern. Oh, I haven't used that pattern so long. Yeah, it was a darted blouse pattern. Um, that's why it was so great. It, I, I, I did a Hawaiian shirt, not a camp shirt. Yeah, like a femme. Yeah, exactly. I know that is one pattern if I ever wanted to do a pattern line that I would do. <laughs> I don't see anyone with one. People will say, oh, but this pattern. I'm like, nope, not the same. <laughs> it's like similar. I would really like that. I'm particularly paying attention to these seams and stuff. 
I feel like I'm going to be doing this for a long time. Get out of the crevice of the draw cord. I have a lot of wax in here. Look at that. Push it in there. This is pretty exciting though. I feel like I'm, my linen's getting a little like I'm glad I looked at their site today and saw they sold this kind of tool because I didn't even see it the first time I was looking. I was like, oh, I have something like that. That's smart. Loki hair or the Angora. Yeah, right, Adina? Yeah, so do you have a heat gun? <laughs> I didn't have a hair dryer until a few years ago. Oh wait, I had a hair dryer, I didn't have any of the other stuff, but I never used it. <laughs> That's awesome, Medina. <laughs> exactly. Not everybody uses those. <laughs> and it would be kind of weird to buy one just for something like this. <laughs> That's awesome, Medina. <laughs> I love that. That could be also, so besides being like a straight hair centric, it could also be very, you know, white centric, you know, assuming that you have all this, everyone has the same hair appliances as you, you know, as me, like I, me doing, me doing that, you know. <clears throat> and I think like in this case, it was more um, like, workshop centric like they assume you had a heat gun i don't even know what you use a heat gun for so i'm like well i don't have one of those hair dryer is probably cheaper there you go terry you don't know why you bought it though hmm is it for removing wallpaper Hmm. Well, how long do you guys want to watch me wax this for? <laughs> On so so. <laughs> Isn't it crazy how light colored it is? It looks so goopy and shiny on the camera, but in person, it doesn't really. Oh, interesting. Adina, yeah. That is interesting. I'm at the part in um, <clears throat> autobiography of Malcolm X where he's giving lots of talks at uh, universities during his days when he was part of the Nation of Islam. And um, it's so interesting him talking about the reactions of the students you know they really want to argue and the professors they really want to argue with him that he's wrong he's like I'm not wrong and he's not <laughs> this is kind of uh, meditative I have to say what do you guys think of this? Do you think you'd ever do this? What does that? Yeah, it's a little bit tacky. My hands are a little waxy right now. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit like, like it feels like waxed paper. Wax, wax live. <laughs> That might sound like I'm doing other kinds of waxing. <laughs> no thanks. Yeah, I wonder if the heat on this Essex, like this linen, how that would go. 
I think I like the idea when I saw the dog coat. I thought, ooh, that's kind of that's kind of an interesting application. Plus, you wouldn't have to do such a huge project. You'd use it, you think, Terry? Yeah. Hair story. Oh, really? Ooh, that sounds good. I, I like, I'm going to check that out. I remember the first time um, I learned that, because my best friend in high school was black. I didn't understand what he meant when he was saying, uh, like, what he did for his hair. I was like, what? And I didn't understand it. He was just like, oh. it was good. It was a good moment. It really stuck with me. I was like, oh, of course I didn't know that. Wow. <laughs> okay. So I think the test is obviously getting it wet, but I'm gonna make sure for sure that I feel confident about it before I test it because I don't wanna have to wait for it to get dry again. No, but they do, rec Penny, they, uh, I didn't have to warm up the wax bar, but they do recommend doing it in a temperature control controlled climate so that it's not, um, cold like they say don't do it in a workshop <laughs> that's funny yeah i think the dog coat is a good project you have three books right now that's great okay well i'm gonna leave this and fix these maybe when those are out walter i'll wax this section and then put the snaps back in i gotta fix these too so, you know, like, how far do I take this? Do I go on this side? I don't think I will. I don't think that's the point in that. But, you know, it's kind of interesting thinking about where you go with this. When I see other people do this, they all vary in the way they look. You can tell some people have done it before or maybe took more care. Other people are kind of just, I don't know what they're doing. They look like they're just slapping it on there. You know? Yeah, I think the hat would be uh, great. I almost made this with the collar and no hood because I thought, oh, I think I'd much rather make a, a matching rain hat because honestly, sometimes I would probably just wear a nylon vest and a hat and no raincoat and no rain and no umbrella. I'm not living in Humboldt anymore. I'm like, I'm getting a workout doing this. <laughs> I'm not living in Humboldt anymore. So the rain here, I mean, I had to sprint to the car. So. Oh, really, Adina? Yeah. Oh, interesting. I kind of love that we don't know people's race here in some ways, and I, but I uh, think it's so important. You know, like in the stream, I don't know who anybody is, and I, I like that as far as being a neutral space for people, but I also feel like it's really important that you don't ignore the fact that there's different races because they are very valuable and that whole colorblind thing is not a good, not a good thing. So I just don't assume. <laughs> okay. Do I do under my flap? I'm doing around the pocket here. Do I do under the flap? I guess I could always do it if I need it later, right? Yeah, I know, Nancy. I am a little like eager to do that. And I did it on that little sample. So this sample is cured. And so Adina, this one isn't tacky.
this camera really picks up a lot of the um, imperfections of it. Yeah, right, Nancy? Age? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, orientation. So I don't think that should matter as far as uh, belonging somewhere. Well, that's not what I mean to say. I mean... You just, you're not able to make assumptions about people, and I like that. We all start here equal, and we stay here equal best as we can make, keep it that way. It says 24 to 48 hours. It will get dirtier. That's a good point, because I can't wash this. The air cures it. <laughs> Dina. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, um, personally I've studied, um, African American and Black American stuff since I was probably 15, 16, and more importantly, or more uh, intentionally from when I was about 17 to 24, I really read a lot of books, but I am so bad at saying the things that I've learned from it and sharing that information. So a lot of times I'll just say something and I'm like, that's not what I mean to say. So I tried, I just don't really a whole lot say. I really just try and make sure I include and lift up other people and um, prioritize people of other, you know, like of other minorities and people that have been put down for and kept down for, you know, for hundreds of years. And I just try and put them because they deserve their time. And so that's what I try and do. I just try and do it through actions best I can. I'm still learning, always learning. I, the Autobiography of Malcolm X is one of my all-time favorite books. And I'm, I was thrilled when Audible just released it um, for the first time. And it's amazing. It's so good. I love rereading it. It's one of my favorite books. And I'm just so glad I still really enjoy that book. And man, he called it like it was and still is to this day. It's really interesting. All right. Oh. <laughs> I'm actually not that tired, but um, I feel like I get distracted and I go on to another thing. But you see how this is actually darker over here now and this is lighter I don't think I did more over here push that in there in those little seams there what do you guys think <laughs> Yeah, right, Nancy? Exactly. Exactly. I think that, um, yeah, the dirt would probably brush out. I could spot clean it, too. You know, like, I could, um, if this got dirty. Because I'll be honest, I'm so, like, the klutzy thing also dovetails in with me, like, picking up a plant and repotting it as I'm walking by and then I just go like this on my clothes you know so I might put my hands in my pocket and they're dirty so you're right this could get dirty mm, no so how long would this take we think like I don't, I've obviously did not finish this front. 
it wasn't that didn't take me that long to do this much and maybe if I wasn't chatting and um, stuff reading a chat I was I was definitely guilty in my 20s of feeling like colorblind we should be colorblind and um, and I think also in the late 80s and early 90s we talked about race differently and there were some pretty momentous things that occurred during that time like Rodney King beating that you know I was kind of in the general uh, area where that happened so um, I think like those kinds of language the language has changed a lot and I definitely don't believe that now you know because why would I want to not see who you are <laughs> you know that's, that's, that seems like erasing someone's identity no <laughs> the uh, intent behind it was altruistic but the reality of it isn't functional I want to get closer to this let's see so how how much do we think my snaps are going to be a liability on this coat you know like I can't really there's a hole in there <laughs> you know what I mean like there's a hole <laughs> no and well Nancy I don't know if I would I mean I definitely am that kind of person walking by someone's thing and I'm like oh their sign fell over and then I'm sitting there yeah but then, um, but no, I just mean like in my own yard. If I saw someone's pot sitting there and the plant got knocked over and they were, I would put it in there. You would too, wouldn't you? So. <laughs> so let's see, like how would we be able to get into this little spot here? Just took out my handy dandy magnetic uh, box opener. That didn't go well. I'm not going swimming in it. Okay, this crumbles way more than the Taylor's wax. Now we know. See, it's an educational process. Eek! <laughs> God. <laughs> that did not go well at all. Eh. All right, well, we can mash it in there a little better though. It's still usable. It's just crumbly. It doesn't seem like it's crumbly like when you feel it. It feels like um, almost like a bar of soap. It feels like a bar of soap. Now I'm going to obsess about all these little pieces here and get rid of them because it makes it look so bad. Hmm. There we go. I'm scraping this stuff off. Okay, so if you cut a chunk off, don't do it over your project. <laughs> there we go. I need like a cloth. Hmm, probably penny, but I don't know how warm it would be. Like I guess I could wear it around and warm it up when it's not raining cold out. Oh yeah, right, tidying strokes displays for sure. I kind of have stopped doing a little bit of that. So I have this like, um, speaking of hair products, not everybody would probably have. I have this like stuff that um, it's like hard like this 
I don't know what you call it, but then you rub it in and you can kind of smooth. I just use tiny little bits, like a, it's not a wax, but I think it's mostly for men. <laughs> I always buy it and it's in the men's section. And um, one I had, I got from uh, that company, uh, Lush. That's where I get my purple shampoo, which I actually haven't bought in a while, but um, I usually get the purple shampoo from them. And um, they have um, this stuff it's like a smoothing stuff and it smells so good but I don't know what happened to mine but it's flaky like this you know how like um, cocoa butter gets if you've ever used cocoa butter I think for this what I would do is put it on something like this so I can get rid of this ridge of the pocket see that see there's a ridge of the pocket Oh my gosh, Sydney. Really? Yeah, pomade. I think that's it. I end up having it for years because I hardly use it and it's like a lot. So I got kind of close to this snap, huh? You know, Sydney, I have a free pattern for organizing wrapping paper, but I don't know if you really want to sew something. It's, a, it's called the closet organizer on the website um i made it for organizing my wrapping paper and stuff but we use one to organize the oh this flap's looking so good um we organ we use one to organize like the attachments to the vacuum cleaner and then like bags we carry out of the house as well it, like hangs in a whole closet <laughs> so look at that crack right there can you guys see it's like there's no wax down there no it's like isn't brill cream um like goopy Right, Mullen? Yeah, maybe I should. Yeah, I put it out in the sun. Yeah, so that one person, Janeka, I think her name was. I'm sorry if I don't know how to say your name. Trust me with a name like Sarami. I know how that is, so. Um, I, did you, I don't know if you're still here, but did you just heat it up with a hair dryer? Or did you lightly, like, with a warm iron? And did you do it on fabric like this? So this isn't tacky over here at all now but I might be just so c covered in wax I'm liking how this looks can you see on me Let's see how it looks it looks like denim on your screen it's a little it looks pretty shiny on camera to me it's not as shiny in person <laughs> Penny, that's funny. Think a hairdryer would work well? Maybe I'll try it on a sample. Oh, look at the light just got brighter. Cool. Oh yeah, there's like a little ridge there. I wonder if waxing this before you put the lining on would have had any merit to it. And then you'd have to like re-wax parts of it, right? But you could have um, you could have waxed it and then gone behind it and waxed a little bit, like in places like this, you know, where there's um, stitching here, right? So then you could you could go behind it, which I could do, but you know it's against me. But you know, this actually isn't sewn until after it's lined anyway. Yeah, Nancy, that's so funny you say that because, like, if you start looking at the Otter Wax hashtag, there's definitely that kind of element to it of folks that are into that rugged wear, you know. you got to have the little... <laughs> What's foot? Like a foot. I love... I've seen that word, but I don't know what it is. Speaking of book clubs, this was my... Um apron I made when I used to be in a book club and it's all people reading books. I've had it for a long time. Oof, it's a little overblown, but I kind of like it. 
All white people, by the way. <laughs> but I like uh, that they're all reading books. This is my book club apron. Not my book club apron, but I bought this when I was in a book club. <laughs> or I made it. God, I can't talk. Yeah, fall. Exactly. You think so? Yeah. The rugged look. Rugged, that's the word. G1000 fabric. What's G1000 fabric? That sounds technical. I may have to look that up. Um, oh yeah, I have a keyboard. I do have a keyboard. G1000 fabric. Oh, okay. That is the, oh, y'all, Robin. Okay. Oh, it's polyester cotton. That's interesting because you got it on this. Yes, I agree. Oh yeah, and they have a little bar of wax there. Oh yeah. Well here, I'll put a link to this in the chat. If you wanna check it out. Very interesting, I'm gonna check this out. Okay, I'm gonna check this out, this is pretty cool. Beeswax and paraffin. So this is paraffin free, if that matters to anybody. Um, someone was saying that this stuff can get really flammable, but I don't think the one I'm using is quite as flammable. I'm just kind of looking at this, this is kind of interesting. But this, their wax might adhere better to something with such a high uh, polyester content. So um, that might be why. Swedish, yeah. A little bit of Swedish pride from Malin. <laughs> cool. All right, I'm probably gonna call it there, you guys. So you might see me live in the next few weeks. Um, I can't quite tell what my move in date really is gonna be right now. I'm a little confused by that. See, I'm pr pretty much, you know, ready to start getting ready to move. But, God, it's so freaking bright. We're all glad to be past this project, aren't we? <laughs> um, I'm just gonna get ready like I'm ready to move by March 1st. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a lot of snow, huh? <laughs> Look at the difference. This looks so shiny on camera. It's not, it's matte. In person, it is not shiny. But on the camera, it looks wet and shiny. It is not at all. It, and it feels pretty good. It's not tacky anymore, it's already curing. So, um, so anyway, I am moving to a dedicated stream set up. Uh, so I need to get rid of stuff, reorganize, pretty much redo the whole thing. And I'm moving to a smaller space, but it'll be dedicated to the stream only, which is pretty exciting. I'm actually pretty excited about this. But I can't tell if it's actually going to be ready for me to move on March 1st. I'm moving in the same building. There seems like there might be a little bit of drama going on with it that I'm not a part of. <laughs> I, I do feel like I have soft hands, you're right. So, um, uh, so if things are going okay, and I am probably have to probably sew anyway, I will probably just pop on live and be sewing something. So you might see me just so I don't have withdrawals from you guys. So, oh, Ray. <laughs> I'm trying to finish up a video right now to post. And then I have others, but I just don't. I can't really sit here and spend, spend my time editing video when I have to do this. Because that takes me all day. So, it's not like I can edit something in an hour. It usually takes six to eight hours. At least. Because I have to then also format it and upload it. So... 
That's not including the recording time and re-recording. Eh, sometimes it does, actually. All right, well, um, what a fantastic project. Thanks a bunch to Hearts Fabric for allowing me to make this and keep it. Um, they gave me money toward the fabric so I could pick whatever I wanted and get 10% off right here on anything on their site. And um, if you're in there in California, so if that works for you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my tea house dress that I've made, but not on stream. Oh, let's see. Well, the navy blue one. Do yeah, I figured that was what was Michelle. Um, I made a navy blue one, a plaid one, and the floral one. Right? That's I made three then. I thought there was a fourth one. Um, and the navy blue one I made before I streamed. My very first one. Very classic tea house. I love that one. I almost wore it today. And then um the floral one was in the Nanny Eero fabric. I, did I stream that? I streamed the plaid one. And then since I streamed that, I cut a section out the center back, lower center back skirt. I cut a big rectangle out up to the waist. And then I put a panel in there that was gathered so that the back had seen. Yeah. So you just want to see the dresses themselves. They're all on my website. With all the photographs of all of them, I'm pretty sure are on there. I can give you a link to it. Let's see here. Um, can you go away? Thank you. There you go. <laughs> Not you guys. No, I don't want that. I want this. There we go. I love how it really insists that I sign up for the... Um, Oh my gosh. Let's see. Yeah, I've made three. I actually have it on my schedule that um, I want to make that this year and upload it. Yeah, we really do, Sydney. We really do. I do have... Is this... I didn't have my usual book, so here we go. Okay, these are the projects I have in the back of my head for the rest of the, not for the whole rest of the year, but these are the things I already have planned. Just to give you guys a heads up. I am designing a laundry basket, not a laundry bag, but a laundry basket. You know, like I have a wicker, wicker basket and it's falling apart and I keep like repairing it and I think it's just done. So I'm, I think I'm gonna try and make a cloth canvas laundry basket, you know, one that kind of still is that oval shape and, and then it could also be light and hang up, maybe even fold up, you know, and hang up on my wall out of the way. And I'm designing a fabric for it for fun. And I'm even thinking about making it like a printed pattern on a spoon flower panel, but this all seems kind of out of my league. I mean, I know how to do some of that, but not all of it. So that's one thing I want to figure out. Um, I want to make some pajama tank tops out of knits. I want to make trousers. So basically just nice pants but not nice fabrics. <laughs> Shorts, the darted blouse I keep threatening to make. I have a decades of style dress that's beautiful from a Hearts Fabric I'm gonna sew. Um, the Dawn jeans. I need some long sit sleeve knit t-shirts. I think, I'm thinking about making a button down shirt out of knit. I'm just kind of going rogue on that and doing that. I have the bluette dress in my from my needle sharp box. The Yanta Overalls by Helen's Closet. I want to design and make a portable litter box that zips shut for my go bag uh, for fire evacuations. Uh, I want to make a white shirt with pin tucks in it. And I got to make my mom's room. So far, those are the things that have 
come to mind for sewing so this year. So I do have shorts on that list. I am looking for a pattern. And then um, the camp shirt idea is interesting to me too. <laughs> yeah, right. I want those yantas. I have, I'm, what I'm nervous about with those is that I'll want to, 10 pairs of, 10 sets of those, and I'll just want to wear those all the time. Anything without a waist, like a dress, I love things without waists. So those are some of the things that I'm thinking about. Um, if you guys have suggestions, please, you know, tell me, but also ask fabric stores or pattern companies, hey, you know, I really want to see this project sewn like I want to see it sewn the way that so so live does because she doesn't edit it down and it's uh you know it's like interactive would you consider sending her a project to sew she sends the project back to you it's a low cost sponsorship they are the Yanta overalls are on sale right now if anyone's interested in those um pick them up because I'm gonna sew those I want them myself so, but if you guys could help me out with that, that would be really great. I don't make money doing this. I do this for whatever you guys want. And I'm, and so the reason I sew my things is because I don't have things to do for other people. So I've also been thinking about um, doing some sort of tr charitable sewing and maybe even doing fundraising to pay for the projects because I finally remembered there's this place that me and Cricket have do donated to locally that is specifically for women and children who are suddenly leaving their home environment. They didn't plan to, maybe they've been wanting to for a really long time, and then finally the moment is a, it allows them to get out of a situation, but they pretty much leave their home life with nothing but whatever's on their backs. And so this is a, a very anonymous and low key organization because they protect the people that they're serving. And so um, me and Cricket have donated things to them and I thought that is the perfect place to sew and give things to someone like that. Giving handmade clothes to people who really need clothes. Maybe, you know, they don't want to just donate a junk, you know? So people off people's off things so I thought that would be also another thing that I'd really like because I've been trying to think of something we could be sewing for and giving things away to but I don't want to just donate things you know I would like it to not be sold you know what I mean like I'd like it to go to people and they don't have to buy things too and this is that organization helps them oh oh really Melin cool I feel like I've, yeah, I think I saw those. I think I mentioned to you also that Cash Merit's dividing their marketing streams. So you might want to look at that if you want just to see people in all of their sizes or people in just the upper size end. You might want to make those choices there. You have a separate Instagram. Um, Andrea from Sew to Fit is having, she's doing some sort of celebration tonight on YouTube. I'm going to try and pop in there. She did a sew along with a bunch of other makers. It looks really fun and she was promoting her pattern, the Misty Top. So I might stop in there, see if you guys are there. I, I usually don't talk a lot in her streams because I don't want it to look like I'm promoting myself. So, um, because my name is so, I don't have a personal YouTube. <laughs> It's too much. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, so let's see. I will see you guys, I'm sure, sooner than later. I will probably be having sales on all the stuff on my website for all the physical things so I can get rid of them. They're already at wholesale cost. So if you want any of that stuff, you want better selection, um, but or wait till it goes on sale. Don't buy anything till it goes on sale. I don't really care about I just want it to go to good homes. I don't want to have to donate all these cut fabric pieces. So I'm trying to move it out of here. So, all right. <laughs> what else? Yeah, exactly, Patty. Yeah, they do. That's exactly true. 
Yeah, we've definitely given, we did, we did drives at her 4-H and we put specific lists together and we asked them what they needed. But it's usually women and children of all sizes, ages. Um, uh, and so you just never know. There could be babies to teenagers, you know? I think that, and what if they're like professionals and they have to go to work? They don't want a donated t-shirt from Goodwill, you know, they want like um, clothes, so. Anyway, we'll see, I always have ideas. I am always working on 10 things at once and I'm really only good at doing one thing at a time, honestly. Humans are. We just take on all these other things, so. This is such a great project. I can't believe it's done, done. Well, kind of, it's done for you guys. I still have a lot of work to do. I need to tack all these little things, sew my things, uh, of my pocket right here, and wax it. And I need to fix that those two snaps. <laughs> Jack's like, or Zach doesn't even say hi. He's like, uh, yo, you put those on wrong, and then he leaves. <laughs> Are you still here, Zach? <laughs> Thanks for saying it. <laughs> oh, man. I'll get these off. They went on so good, too. <laughs> All right, Walter. Yeah, I'll see you next time. I think what just arrived is fabric from Spoonflower. So I'm pretty excited about that because I need to work on this design that I'm working on for that series. So finally, I got some test fabric to try. <sighs> All right, you guys. Have a great weekend. Thanks for all the chit chat and sewing with me and um, for hearts for sponsoring. So. I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Beverly, you're right. You want me to try it on? <laughs> I'm like sitting here. It started. I kept waxing. Sorry, I'm back. I'm back. Let me try it on for you. <laughs> I'll try it on. I was just about to sign off and I saw your little like, try it on. <laughs> I can actually put this one on. See, maybe if it, if you tied this, I don't know. <laughs> See, yep. I faked you guys out. It feels good. Feels good. Let it rain. Only on this side. <laughs> Sleeves are a nice length. It looks really good. I can turn my head and the hood follows and it's not even snapped. So yeah, we did good on this one. And then when the hood's down, because I altered my hood, it's probably going to be a little bit higher up back here. Feels okay though. Yeah. So the clearance between my arm and the jacket is pretty good. Not too much. It did? Okay, good. It feels really good. It's in a good spot. Like I put it a little high. I think they say in the thing to put it lower, but I wanted it high. Yay. Looks pretty official with all the hardware on her, even though the hardware is a, a, a little bit off in those two. A little bit off. They're on backwards. <laughs> to say what it is. Let's see.
Yeah, that looks good. I don't see any um, ballooning. Like I'm, I was a little worried about that at first, you know, remember? Legit. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. Wow. All right. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for the reminder, Beverly. I'll see you guys. Bye.